This is the Lockpicking Lawyer, and what I have for you today is a prototype of a brand new product from the Boldy Lock Company in Canada. This massive hunk of brass with the wild looking key is the limited edition variant of the Model 543 Closed Shackle Padlock. The model number comes from the dimensions of the lock. It's five quarters of an inch thick, four inches from top to bottom, and three inches from side to side thus 543. The lock is currently the subject of a Kickstarter campaign in which three different variants of this lock are available. This brass limited edition lock is the most expensive at 225 Canadian dollars or about 175 US. It's limited edition because it will only be available on Kickstarter and not thereafter. And it's probably so expensive because brass is a very expensive metal out of which to make locks. It's also very heavy, making this lock about three pounds, five ounces. Then we have a high security variant. That one's made entirely out of 17.4 hardened stainless steel, and I believe it costs 210 Canadian dollars or about 163 US. And finally, there is a lightweight version made out of aluminum. That's a third the weight of this brass lock and it's probably best for applications in which you carry the lock around, like locking up a bicycle. That version costs 175 Canadian or 136 US. The Bully Lock Company sent the steel prototype to Bosnian Bill and the aluminum prototype to Lockman 28. So as they post videos, I'll put links to them in the description below so you can check out those other variants. We're going to be taking a very close look at the brand new locking mechanism that this padlock introduces, but first let's take a close look at the external characteristics. We of course have this beautiful brass lock body, but if you have a keen eye, you may have noticed that the bottom plate is different. You'll get a 17-4 stainless steel bottom plate regardless of what lock body material you order. These plates at their very thinnest are a quarter of an inch thick, which provides some pretty good protection from the bottom for the core. On the side, you can see we have this stainless steel plug. It's actually on both sides. Those will not be in the final product. They're artifacts of the prototyping process. And in the final version, the plugs will match the lock body material. They'll also be sanded smooth, so you probably won't even see it. Then we have the shackle. It's essentially a prototype mock-up shackle. It's unhardened and unfinished, but dimensionally correct. It's 7 16ths of an inch thick, or about 11 millimeters. Now that's a little bit on the thin side for locks of this size. So I asked the Bully Lock Company about it, and they had a pretty good answer. They wanted to make a usable lock. If we look at this lock, it's an Abloy Model 362. And you can see it has a 16 millimeter thick shackle, which is huge and very strong, but it does have a problem. That problem is that most people don't own and probably couldn't easily find a chain or hasp that this would fit through. The 7 16 shackle is on the upper end of shackles that can be reasonably expected to work in most applications. So while the lock nerd in me would really love to see something a little bit thicker, I do have to acknowledge that bigger isn't always better if it renders the lock unusable. So this one might strike a good balance. Now let's talk about the lock core. It's very similar to the original Bully Lock, which I featured in video number 636, I believe. I'll put a link to it in the description below, but they doubled down on the design. Rather than having one tine on the fork, they have two tines. And rather than having, I believe, five pins, we now have nine pins. Now, one interesting note about the key is that it is a little bit shorter than the original key, which is actually something I like because this was huge on your keychain. This is also a prototype key. It doesn't say Boley, but the final product will. So opening this up is very easy. In fact, easier than the original Boley lock. We insert it, it only goes in one way because one tine is thicker than the other, and we start turning. At 45 degrees, the key will slip further into the lock, then we keep turning another 90 degrees, and the shackle can be completely removed. To lock it up, we just reverse the process. 
Now, I've heard quite a few people talking about Bowley locks who have never actually held one before, saying that this key looks very, very weak. And you might think that, in fact, that was my first impression before I held one of these keys. And I have to say, they are extraordinarily strong. You couldn't bend one of these if you were trying, unless you had some tools. So I would not worry about these things bending or breaking. So let's take this guy apart now, and I will show you the new double tine locking mechanism. To get this apart, we have two, I believe three sixteenths of an inch thick cap screws that are down the shackle holes. So let's get them out. If you do get one of these padlocks and take it apart, a little pro tip, don't take it apart while it's in the unlocked position because you will just dump a lot of pins out. Luckily, that wasn't a mistake I had to make myself. Bowie Lock Company told me about that in advance. Come on, there we go. Okay, so here's our lock body. Everything is out of it, our two cap screws, these are our two ball bearings for the ball bearing locking mechanism. Interesting little feature is there is a magnet here to keep these on the inside of the locking mechanism while this is in the unlocked position. We then have a little pin in the top. This limits the rotation to about 90 degrees. And here we have the rest of the locking mechanism. You can see this bottom plate. And if we can see this operating when it's outside of the lock, you can see that top actuator turn. So now let's take it apart a little bit more. And you can see this bottom plate actually integrates the pin shields with it. So when we insert this key and turn it, you can see what those forks do is rotate around the pin shields. Those pin shields protect the pins to make sure you can't get any picks directly to the pins. The only way you can get a pick in there is to make something long and U-shaped. And that's very difficult to do, though it certainly is possible. Then we look in here, we can see the meat of the core. We have this outer lock body, then we have this intermediate ring, and that's actually the outside of the core. And then we have what the Bully Lock Company calls the idler. And the idler is what turns when you're first inserting the key, but stops turning once you've gotten to the point where you're turning the mechanism. And should we take it further apart? Let's see if it's easy to do. If we can get it apart easily, we will do that. Okay. Okay, so this is our side with five pins. And does this slide? Yes, it does. Okay, so let's take all that apart. Okay, a small brass spring, smaller than what we would find in a normal bully lock, a standard key pin and a spool pin. And we have a serrated pin and a standard key pin, same short spring. Okay, standard key pin and a driver pin that is standard with very sharp edges. The exact same in slot four. And the same in slot five. Okay, moving over to the side of the core with four pins. I'm actually going to put them right on top of here. The same spring, all standard pins. Again, those driver pins with the super sharp edges. 
and I believe they have the same thing in the standard Boley lock. All standard. Okay, again, standard pins. Now we can take this apart all the way. You can see the lock body itself with the pin holes on either side. We have the core, which incorporates the actuator and also a rare earth magnet, magnet right there. And if I can get this out, we have the idler ring. And let me show you exactly what that does. When we insert the key, you can see it rotates with the key. So that prevents anything from being inserted that isn't a key itself and isn't following that exact path, essentially blocking all avenues that you would have toward the pin, except going straight up and around. So really nice little, little concept here. It was very well executed in the original Bowley lock, and this one just steps it up a notch. So well done to the Bowley lock company. This is a very nice product. So if you do want one, I will leave a link in the description below to the Kickstarter campaign. As I said, those three variants of the lock are available. I gave you the prices, and also look in the description below for Bosnian Bill and Lockman 28's videos. That's it for today. If you do have any questions or comments, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.